Good afternoon, all. Uh, before starting session, I wish our dynamic chairman, C. A. Rajendra Shetty sir, a very happy birthday. Thank you, Rakesh ji. Yes. Welcome all. Rakesh ji, happy birthday. Sorry for interrupting. Thank you. This is dedication for this attending a session. <laughs> So uh, we have now session on usual additions in income tax, for which we have very learned Divan Shah sir with us. We are conducting this uh, session under lockdown knowledge series. Uh, I request Shetty sir to give his opening remark. Thank you, Rakesh ji. Good afternoon to all, and welcome on this eighth webinar. Of the lockdown knowledge series, at the outset, I would like to welcome to the speakers here, Divyanga Shah from Ahmedabad, and all the members from the Nasik branch. Before we move ahead, there is a small announcement. Many members of the Nasik branch are suffering from the COVID pandemic. The ICI come out with the medical finance assistance up to one lakh fifty thousand from the Charter Accountant Benevolent Fund for the treatment of the corona disease. The FAQ and the application form is already sent on the official WhatsApp groups. My request is that the member who are suffering from the COVID-19 disease kindly check all the FAQ of the assistant and apply in the prescribed form. The signature of the chairman is required on that form. My request to all the member that you need not require to visit the branch for the signature. You just send a scan copy of all relevant documents in the and the prescribed form. Our branch will provide the chairman signed copy form to your doorstep. So my request is to all the members who are eligible for the assistant and take the benefit and do the required compliance. I wish all the members to stay uh, stay safe, stay healthy. Thank you very much. Over to you, Rakesh. Thank you, Rajendra sir. Now, uh, without wasting much time, I request Sohil Shah sir to introduce today's speaker, Shah sir. Thank you, Rakesh sir. I welcome Divyan Shah sir and all the members on behalf of Nasik Branch. So it's my privilege to introduce such a learned speaker, C. A. Divyan Shah from Ahmedabad. He is a practicing chartered accountant, having a main practice of appeal since 2010. Has served as a member of different committees of Ahmedabad branch of WIRC for the years from the year 2012 till date. He has also remained as a member of Direct Tax Committee for a given post budget memorandum on Finance Act 2016 and also Finance Act 2017 on behalf of Ahmedabad branch, a regular speaker at Ahmedabad branch of WIC on topic of income tax. He has remained faculty at the certificate course conducted by Institute of Chartered Accountants for, of India for the members. He has also delivered lectures to income tax officers and inspectors at different forum of income tax department training center which is also known as Direct Tax Regional Training Center. He's also visiting faculty at Bank, Bank of Baroda Training Institute, known as Baroda Apex Academy for their employees on tax laws. He has delivered many, many lectures at different study circles and also at different branches of WRC of ICI for the larger benefit of CA fraternity. He has also delivered lectures at CA Association Ahmedabad and Tax Advocate Association Gujarat. He's a faculty at GMCS courses conducted by Ahmedabad branch of WRC of ICI for topic of assessment and appeal under Income Tax Act. Also, he's also faculty at MSOP training at Ahmedabad chapter of Institute of Company Secretary of India for the topic Income Tax. So he's a, uh, he was a visiting faculty at HL Institute of Commerce, Ahmedabad University, former visiting faculty at BK Mujumdar Institute of Business Administration, Ahmedabad University. So with this brief introduction, I request our speaker, C.A. Divyang Shah, sir, to address the members. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you for such a warm uh, introduction and the uh, welcome. Uh, before I may start the session, I would like to congratulate to Nashik Branch, first of all, because we have heard that every problem can be turned into opportunity. I'm sure lots of members has now only the time and they can do anything, but now knowledge sharing is the good option to do with. So I have heard many times there is a none 
there is no time could be there where we can not do anything we can do something if we cannot complete the work we can at least sharpen our knowledge or the skills so i think that is what done by the uh, nasik branch and that is really good thing and along with that they are also serving the members as far as possible by uh, uh, channelizing the aid given by the ici so good thing what you are doing with this brief thing i would like to directly uh, move on to the topic uh, i think i'm allowed to share the screen right yes sir okay before i may directly jump to the topic one more thing uh, i'm trying to gather different things in the income tax which is the matter of the addition addition could be in different form so every time whenever any income tax addition is made one or the other way some options are available by which we can get the addition deleted legibly by filing appeal rectification or revision so i'm just trying upon touch upon those areas and issues are many but i'm just trying to touch upon which are very larger in the matter of the addition so by that time i'm just sharing the screen first of all just a minute Okay, I think something is visible on the screen. Yes, sir. Okay, done. Ah, uh, first of all, let's take a brief of the section fifty C. Fifty C says, see, whenever and one more thing, oh, uh, any any kind of query, if you had put the same query in the chat box, whenever a particular topic ends up, I'll try to take the same. So we don't lost in the queries. Okay, first thing, section fifty C. See, whenever any addition is made, that is, whenever sale transfer is made for the immovable property, so for calculating capital gain, which value is considered sale consideration? Answer is no. If stamp duty valuation is higher than the sale consideration, the stamp duty valuation will be taken up to calculate the capital gain. Now, lots of time it may happen that mostly in 2011, when stamp duty valuation is notified. So uh, most of them had to happen that okay, at the time of assessment. we as a assessee cannot get the different benefits so one of the benefit is that if we had an issue that we don't are agree with the stamp duty valuation can we take the objection answer is yes again section 50c sub section 1 says if a stamp duty valuation is higher than the sale consideration stamp duty valuation shall be considered for calculating capital gain sub section 2 says whenever assessee has a objection about the adoption of this stamp duty valuation then assessee can take the objection i hope that uh, everyone can recall this provision so in this scenario what is the limitation first thing at the time of income tax return if we are not getting agree with the stamp duty valuation can we take a objection practically no i'm going to touch upon this area but later on second thing lot of time it may happen that the, at the time of assessment we forget to place our objection in front of the ao so now addition for the 50 c is made and we don't have to take objection so now matter reach to appeal so we file the first appeal in the first appellate authority can we say ki i forgot to place the objection in front of ao now allow me the opportunity to file the objection so for that just a minute this one is the relevant point this is the judgment of the sunil kumar agrawal in the given citation wherein kolkata high court said if assessee has not taken a objection under section 50c sub section 2 then also whenever assessing officer wants to make the addition under section 50c he has to refer the valuation to the departmental valuation officer so now if we have any cases wherein addition is made under section 50c assessment order is passed now can we claim that we don't agree with the stamp duty valuation answer is yes based on this judgment and let me clarify this judgment later on is followed by most of the tribunal including the mumbai tribunal so we can always claim that matter should be referred to dvo what is the benefit see section 50c is based on the stamp duty valuation a stamp duty valuation is a kind of a price they decide for a particular area for a land so now whenever matter is referred to dvo 
departmental valuation officer we can always file some evidences by which we can say that stamp duty valuation is not right let me take an example for example i sell a property in the nasik for a 45 lakh stamp duty valuation is a 60 lakh and now assessment started addition is made for 15 lakh difference of the same in appeal can i claim that i don't agree with the 60 lakh answer is yes based on this judgment and in because of this judgment cit and tribunal both has to refer matter back to file of the ao and with the direction that assessing officer will refer the valuation to dvo now dvo will issue the notice to us by saying why don't you agree with the 60 lakh of the valuation so there could be multiple reason that where your property is situated is some slum area is surrounding that or some uh, encroachment is there on the property you can always claim that this property is not the worth of 60 lakh if we can prove okay, uh, along with that property some uh, same kind of property sold with the lesser stamp duty valuation or with a lesser price then also dvo do accept the lower valuation lower than stamp duty valuation so whenever addition for a under section 50c is made this course of action action could always be relevant at the time of assessment take the objection that you don't agree with the stamp duty valuation if at the time of assessment you cannot take the objection then take the objection in the appellate forum and then after get it referred to dvo and i'm sure that valuation comes down then stamp duty valuation hope that i am making some points for the uh, 50c addition if any query for this particular matter please put the same in the chat box okay done now this is the thing now one more thing see what happens uh this finance act 2020 2021 both have said that <coughs> if stamp duty valuation for example is a uh, for example 1 crore and your sale consideration is a uh, for example 96 lakhs so what is the difference it is a only 4 lakh of the extra stamp duty valuation so in in this budget what they have said if a difference of these two things are lesser than 10% of the stamp duty valuation then in that case the stamp sorry lesser than 10% of the sale consideration in that case the stamp duty valuation shall not be taken as a final price rather sale consideration will be taken as a final price what is the purpose of making this amendment that see stamp duty valuation is basically estimate in this particular area of nasik what should be the rate per square feet that is assumption by the government so that cannot be taken as a straight forward rule that this is the only price by which you can sell So if a gap is a however having a ten percent, then the sale consideration will be the final price for calculating capital gain in the income tax law. Now this is a new amendment. Can we take the benefit of this amendment for earlier years? For example, as of now, assessment year eighteen nineteen assessment is going on. For example, there is any client in which section fifty C is addition is made, and in that case, sale consideration and stamp duty valuation difference is only a less less than 10% in that case i would say yes we can take the benefit of that amendment because amendment is otherwise supported by the judgment or lady before amendment is made i'm just reading the first judgment if the difference between a sale consideration of the property shown by assessee for example 96 lakh and fair market value determined by the dvo in this case matter was referred to dvo is less than 10% the ao is not justified in substituting the value determined by dvo for a sale consideration disclosed by the assessee in that case sale consideration will be the final price next judgment i am reading we have carefully considered the rival contention and perused the relevant material on record so far as addition under section 50c is concerned we find that property has been sold for 10 lakh 11 thousand and stamp duty valuation is 11 lakh 14 thousand differential of the two do not exceed 10% of the stamp duty valuation there is nothing on record to suggest that the assessee has received any amount over and above the agreed consideration therefore keeping in view the factual matrix and consideration of the fact valuation being a subjective matter the impugn addition were justify uh, were not justified and therefore stand deleted over here also mumbai tribunal deleted the addition because difference between a stamp duty valuation and sale consideration is the less than 10% of a stamp duty valuation and same is followed by amdavad tribunal also in the last judgment i'm not reading the same rather it is available in the notes 
so now what is my contention if section 50c is addition is made it is for assessment year 1819 and difference between the sale consideration and stamp duty valuation is less than sell uh, 10% then also the addition should not be there based on this judgment now how to take the benefit of the sale now take the scenario in our example our sale consideration is 96 lakh Uh, for example 96 lakh and for uh, uh, full value of consistent duty valuation is 100 crore it is assessment in 1819 so in that case assessment order will be passed claim this as a judgment and there are also judgment which says this amendment is a curative um, amendment that 10% difference is there stamp duty valuation shall not be taken that amendment is curative that's all applicable for the earlier year also so you can take a benefit in that way so that is the first thing second thing you can always claim that you are not getting agree with the stamp duty valuation that is second point now important aspect something something out of the box now before i may move to the same i would like to again brief the provision stamp duty valuation is higher than sale consideration stamp duty valuation shall be taken as a final full value of consideration now sub section 2 says of section, uh, section 50c if we don't agree with the stamp duty valuation we can take the objection in front of the assessing officer now limitation is something like this if we are filing the income tax return at that time scenario is something like this stamp duty valuation is a 1 crore and sale consideration for example is 60 lakh and we as a assessee don't agree that stamp duty valuation is the right price we wanted to take the objection can we take the objection at the time of filing the return i need the answer in the chat box my question is if we are filing the income tax return wherein a property is sold sale consideration is 60 lakh stamp duty valuation is 1 crore while filing the income tax return i don't agree with the valuation of a 1 crore i would like to take the objection in front of the ao of sub section 2 of section 50c then how can i while filing the income tax return any suggestions or any solution to this in the chat box okay so now great i would like to move on in this particular thing if you have referred the income tax return there is only two options are given first of all stamp duty valuation in that you put a 1 crore and second is a sale consideration wherein you need to put a 60 lakh if you put this thing and difference of the same is not limited to 10% only the your return will automatically take a 1 crore as a full value consideration and accordingly capital gain will be calculated so ideally while filing the income tax return we cannot take the objection that we don't agree with the stamp duty valuation so because of this thing scenario something like this the act actually give you right to take the objection but the income tax return don't you uh, does not give you the right ideally now what shall be scenario if my case is not selected in the scrutiny then effectively i cannot take the objection at all if my case is selected yes i can take the objection now that way we cannot interpret the statute otherwise it will be arbitrate and it will be a violation of the constitution so in this scenario actually itr form should be given option to take the objection against adoption of the stamp duty valuation it is not given so what a charter accountant can do in this scenario my suggestion which is not a legal but which is a practically right is something like this in our example if we are filing the return stamp duty valuation is 1 crore sale consideration 60 lakh in this scenario if you don't agree with the stamp duty valuation which value you will take there is no option is available so now you can do one thing take a valuation certificate from the register valuer for example register valuer says that your valuation is 80 lakh not the 1 crore fair market value of the property is 80 lakh so in the place of the stamp duty valuation write down the 80 lakh and accordingly make the calculation and then after file the income tax return and accordingly pay the tax now after this because of this reason for example your case is selected in scrutiny so you can always say that i don't agree with the stamp duty valuation that's why i take the register valuation and take the 80 lakh because otherwise what will happen i need to pay the tax on 1 crore and department will not conduct the scrutiny and tax is paid matter is done you cannot do anything in this case better to take the registration uh, valuation of the property now 
for example at the time of assessment assessing officer refer now the valuation to dvo that is that is a department valuation officer which is not the registered valuer now he says that property valuation is 90 lakh and obviously you has to pay the tax based on the 90 lakh calculation so in that case obviously you need to pay tax along with the interest so that interest risk you need to take while filing the income tax return if some assessee says that we don't even wanted to take the risk of the interest you can do one thing you can pay the in uh, you can pay the tax according to the calculation of the 1 crore and ask for the refund but put the valuation in the return as a 80 lakh which is a registered uh, register uh, valuation given by the register valuer and ask for the refund agar assessment mein select hota hai then that uh, amount will be adjusted against the interest or rather you don't need to be the, pay the interest actually that is the first thing second thing if because of the addition made by assessing officer during the assessment can they levy the penalty ideally all the assessing officer levy the penalty for addition made under section 50c but effectively all the high court and tribunal all over the india has clearly held that section 50c addition is actually based on the estimate we don't have a proof as a department don't have a proof that you, assessee has taken a higher price than sale consideration so because of this reason the penalty should not be levied when addition is in relation to section 50c so penalty ka koi issue nahi hai so this is the option which one can try while filing the income tax return if one is not getting agree with the stamp duty valuation any query for this part thank you prithvi ji okay second point just so this is the area which i discussed just before that how you do offer sale consideration which is a lower the stamp duty valuation see uh, before i may end up this topic i would like to mention that if a statute give a right then same cannot be taken away by the itr forms in this scenario a right to take the objection is given but same is taken away by by not giving option in itr so that should not be the case reverse is also not possible for example if itr don't have any condition then can itr form sorry if uh, income tax act doesn't have any particular condition then whether itr form can create a condition for claiming any deduction answer is no so let me take an example for this if we are claiming a bad debt as a deduction then few conditions are required to be fulfilled in those condition whether having the pan number of the debtor is a requirement answer is no still before few years one itr form is asked that if you don't give the pan number of the data that bad debt will not be allowed so lots of people have put the fake pan number of the data when the same is not available with them so whether it is a violation answer is no itr form effectively cannot create a condition that you should have a pan number to create the bad debt when otherwise law does not have such a condition so try to understand in this context also 50c is giving the option now there cannot be interpretation ki bhai assessment hua to hi aap objection le sakte ho kyunki alag alag assessee ke liye alag alag option nahi ho sakte option has to be given to everyone effectively and equally rather is that clear yes sir okay done now second thing section 50c is a basically addition in the hands of the seller So, for example, if I am selling the asset to Sohil Bhai, so I am the seller. If I sell the property for 60 lakh and stamp duty valuation is 1 crore, so 40 lakh shall be added as per 50C in my hands. Correspondingly, in the hands of the purchaser, that is the buyer, that is Sohil Bhai, the 40 lakh shall be again added as a income from other sources under section 50C 56 to 10, which is the new section. not new but it is amended section is that clear so now now if when the return of income tax return is uh, getting uh, uh, i am sitting over here to file the income tax return of sohil bhai who purchased the property for a 60 lakh when stamp duty valuation is 1 crore now can i take now if you refer section 56 to 10 in that section also it is given that if you have a objection for for a this stamp duty valuation then you can take the objection 
again while filing income tax return of sohil bhai i don't have any option to select in the itr form so you can repeat the same which i explained to you for the 50c and again if assessment is selected scrutiny assessment is selected for sohil bhai for the year in which property is sold in the assessment also he can take the objection that i don't agree with this tempted valuation and in that case assessing officer is bound to refer the valuation to dbo if during the assessments will be missed to take the objection he can do the same in the appellate forum also the same remedy will be available in the hands of the buyer also hope that i am trying to put some uh, value addition okay now uh, if anyone has referred section 56 to 10 now this section is actually came into existence from assessment year 1718 Again, this assess this is actually came into the picture into assessment year seventeen eighteen. So before that, which section was there? That was section fifty six to seven B. Sorry, seven was there. Just a minute. Okay, before this section fifty six to ten, it came to picture. Section fifty six to seven was there. That is also similar provision. I would like to refer the provision first of all. that will make the thing easy i think you can see my screen observe it my new date is interesting this is section 56 i'm referring sub section 2 just heading In a particular, <coughs> Shah sir. Yes sir. Uh, in section fifty C, as per you told, uh, we have we can go for valuation if assessment is open. Yes. That uh, is practical practical uh, thing which will happen. Okay, sir. मुझे एक बात बताइए अगर मुझे valuation officer को जो है वो सिर्फ A O ही refer कर सकता है या हम खुद भी उसको कर सकते हैं? नहीं वैल्यूएशन ऑफिसर मतलब डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ वैल्यूएशन ऑफिसर वो डिपार्टमेंट एग्जैक्टली एग्जैक्टली डिपार्टमेंट का वैल्यूएशन क्योंकि मेरा एक प्रैक्टिकल प्रॉब्लम ऐसा है क्या क्या मेरा असेस में मेरे को एक प्रॉपर्टी खरीदना है जिसका गवर्नमेंट वैल्यूएशन बहुत ज्यादा है बट उसके ऊपर रिजर्वेशन है हम्म तो उसका एक्चुअल कॉस्ट कम है हम्म हम्म तो फॉर दैट पर्पस वी कैन रेफर टू द इनकम टैक्स वैल्यूअर नो वी कैन नॉट वी डोंट हैव अ पावर ओके वी कैन नॉट we can only get the uh, valuation from the register valuer who are the private uh, valuer okay but register with the income tax register with the income tax that we can avoid yes. those are called register valuer okay hum wo le sakte hai ha barabar par hum ao ko refer nahi kar sakte nahi kar sakte obviously it is a only we cannot refer to ao we cannot refer to dbo also dbo dbo so we cannot refer to dbo yes yes obviously we cannot okay sir thank you Okay. Now, so uh, what I'm trying to say, if a addition, uh, I purchase a property for a sixty lakh, stamp duty valuation is a one crore. Now, this purchase is made, for example, assessment year thirteen fourteen. For example, what I'm trying to prove, what I'm trying to explain you, sometimes what happen, amendments are made subsequently. So, first of all, fifty six two in a particular and without prejudice to the gen generality of the. provision of the subsection 1 the following income shall be chargeable to income tax under the head income from other sources namely now i am directly moving to the uh, section 56 subsection 2 clause number 7 this is 7 now see what where any sum of money exceeding 25000 rupees is received without consideration by an individual sorry this is not 7 this is 5 sorry this is 7 Where an individual or HUF receive in any previous year from any person or person on or after the first day of April two thousand nine, but before first day of April two thousand seventeen. Now take a look. Look into this provision. This section fifty six two seven is applicable only for individual and HUF. So effectively, if a partnership firm, LLP, company, trust, corporate society purchase a property less than standard valuation. then this section is not applicable up to assessment year 1670 still loss of assessing officer makes a mistake by making the addition 
now i am reading this one where in uh, uh, clause number 7 sub clause b now this b is actually amended from assessment year that is the assessment year 14 15 by finance year 2014 wherein two scenarios put on without consideration you purchase a property and you purchase a consideration wherein a consideration is less than stamp duty valuation now this second part is put on only from assessment year 14 15 before that only one kind of situation was there where you purchase the property without consideration so effectively up to assessment year 13 14 if i purchase the property with the less than stamp duty valuation but paid some consideration then no addition can be made because this is amended then after hope that i am making some point my point is simple if i purchase the property without consideration addition could be made because provision was there in 56 to 7 uh, clause 7 sub clause b but from assessment year 13 14 15 they say if you purchase a property not without consideration but or you purchase con uh, property without consideration or with the less consideration less than stamp duty valuation then also addition can be made so effectively this amendment is from assessment year 14 15 so if any one is matter is pending or reopen for assessment year 13 14 to make the addition for purchasing property less than stamp duty valuation then addition cannot be made hope that i am putting some sense and this section is become redundant from assessment year 17 18 why because then after clause uh, uh, clause number 10 is replaced this is clause number 7 now i am moving to clause number 10 this is clause number 10 now over here wordings are where any person received in any previous year from any person or person on or after first day of april 2017 now both the conditions are there and they have also put the 5% difference over here and that shall be replaced by 10% sooner by finance act 2021 so am i clear with this point any query for this part okay done so i'm just trying to give a brief what we have done it will be very interesting section 50c addition is made already so whenever assessment is going on take the objection that this valuation is not acceptable so matter has to be referred to dvo and in front of dvo try to prove that this valuation is not right you can also give the examples of the other agreement which entered into surrounding area so obviously stamp duty valuation is reduced if this objection is not taken in front of the uh, assessing officer during assessment you can take the objection in front of the testament you can take the objection in front of the uh, cit appeal tribunal also and they will refer matter back to file of ao now whenever you are filing the income tax return you can also take the objection by taking the register valuation from the register valuer and file the return accordingly but but with a condi but uh, be ready to pay the interest if slight addition is increased so this is the scenario any particular query for this part okay so this three points are covered even last is covered and last point see what happens lots of benefits uh, if uh, some violation took place for example if we sell the house property and purchase the another house property why we purchase the another house property so that we can claim the exemption uh, under section 54 now there are some condition one condition is you need to put the amount into capital deposit scheme lots of people may not deposit the same and after when return is due to be filed they came ki sir ye ho gaya and at that time time is not available so what will happen see what is my suggestion in this case take the exemption under section 54 and then after file the return though deposit is not made into the capital deposit scheme to claim the exemption under section 54 or 54f the end number of judgments are available wherein it is clearly held by the tribunal high court that if you miss this uh, procedural aspect just a minute oh, sagar bhai if you miss this aspect also then you can claim the exemption because it is a procedural matter yes sagar ji please tell me any queries there i think someone raised the hand okay i'm moving to next continue 
so this part is done any query for this part or i can move to next okay done moving to next see uh, in the income tax the most difficult thing is to get the work done from the income tax officers or income tax uh, departmental officers basically so a lot of time the problem is we file the 154 application and they don't issue the 154 order itself they don't rectify the mistake or rather they don't pass the order also what happens sometimes we have addition is made we file the appeal in appeal we got the favor addition is deleted now they need to issue the refund and lots of time they don't issue the refund so lots of problems are there so i'm just trying upon to give a particular solution which i have tried and which is found to be really successful huh? so okay i'm taking scenario income tax refund due ho gaya hai acha kyun hua because addition is deleted by the appellate authority so assessing officer got the order of the tribunal and he himself has to pass the order giving effect to the tribunal order and then after his addition is deleted he has to issue the refund there is no claim assessee needs to put so still lots of time assessing officer don't put the uh, don't process the refund so first of all my request give the application simple application and wait for at least two or three months if after take a follow up in that time period also if then after he don't process the refund what one can do a grievance can be made on the income tax portal i have filed the grievance and they respond to grievance is good so now sometimes what happen even grievance is not answered properly so new portal is started of the central government that is cp gram full form is centralized public grievance redressal and monitoring system if you can you file the your grievance on this portal yes procedure is really simple you need to get a login details by putting your basic details and you can file the your grievance over here and what is the uh, good thing over here this is directly monitored by the central government or a pa pm office and lots of most of the income tax officer find it really difficult to award this application of grievance and the process is immediately if your refund is uh, rightly allowed to you but before that try to give all the information properly to ao so that he can process your refund easily i have tried this once i have uh, filed in a grievance application on income tax portal they were not much uh, interested they were not giving the answers to our even uh, when we whenever we are going to meet to the income tax officer theek hai baad mein kar lenge phone karenge to phone pe answer nahi dete the once i make the application on this portal the officer directly start calling us and asking for details can you give the details so that we can process the refund it is a really good thing one should try it and now in the nowadays when this everything is uh, from work from home everything is faceless i think we can try this portal one more thing lots of people are not aware that whenever refund is processed obviously interest is allowed at the rate of 6% per annum if they are granting refund after some time but in the that section is section 244 uh, capital a sub section 1 This section says that interest has to be received by the assessee at the rate of six percent. Now, in the same section, that is a clause, uh, subsection number one a, it is mentioned that any appellate order is received, and after receipt, within a three months, if assessing officer does not process the refund, then additional interest of three percent per annum is granted. Though three percent seems to be really bigger, but if a refund is delayed by three years, even three percent is bigger amount. because that's a huge amount it becomes so i would request try to take the advantage of this section this section is basically uh, amended in 2016 so only 5 years old section is there so lots of people may not have idea that this advantage is available so i would request to take this advantage any query for this part okay done so this is done i am moving to next point Uh, one query is there to everyone who will bear the charges of dvo see ideally i would like to tell you anup ji what happens if you take the objection in front of the assessing officer so assessing officer refer the valuation to dvo now assessing officer and dvo both are government employees so dvo don't charge a single amount obviously so no one has to bear a cost because there is no cost department themselves maintain the uh, uh, dvo as an employee 
DBO is basically uh, departmental validation officers. They are basically engineers. Okay, I'm moving to next. This is done. I'm taking next topic. Just a minute. Okay, done. So next topic is the uh, filing of the income tax return for a charitable trust. Lots of time we find it difficult and we find the addition while income tax return is processed by the CPC Bangalore. So for that, this is the some solution we are discussing over here. Before that, I'm just taking a brief of the problem. Charity, uh, sorry, public trust. Public trust may include a public charitable trust or public religious trust. If a charitable trust is there, if we refer the provision, it is there that we need to file the ITR 7. Now, if that charitable trust is a not registered under section 12 AA, but it is charitable trust or it is a public trust, then while processing the income tax return, what CPC Bangalore do? This is the scenario. This one, para 12 over here. What they do? For example, in our filing of income tax return, my uh, public trust is uh, there, but not registered under section 12 AA. And my gross revenue is a 12 lakh. And application for the purpose of the trust is, for example, 9 lakh. So effectively, I offered an income of a 3 lakh. What processing center will do? First of all, 9 lakh spent for the purpose of the trust will not be allowed as deduction. So my income is 12 lakh. Second thing, even 12 lakh or any income of a trust should be chargeable as an AOP, Association of Person, wherein a basic, basic exemption of 2.5 lakh should be allowed. So AOP is basically charged as per slab rate, 2.5 lakh, 0, 2.5 to 5, 5 percent, 5 lakh and above, 5 lakh to 10 lakh, 20 percent, and 20 lakh or 10 lakh and above, 30 percent tax rate. So that basic exemption available to AOP is not allowed. And last, whatever gross receipt is there, 12 lakh, that will be charged as a maximum marginal rate. This is what they do. So this is the problem. What is the solution? So before that, let's first of all verify if a some public trust is there, which ITR form is applicable. If we refer section 139.4a, let's refer the same. Every person in receipt of income derived from property held under trust or other legal obligation wholly for charitable or religious purpose or in part only for such purpose or of an incoming voluntary contribution so and so shall total income in respect of which he is accessible as a representative of SSE. Exemption should not be considered. I'm skipping bracket. Exit maximum amount which is not chargeable to income tax, meaning thereby that income should be more than 2.5 lakh. Furnish a return of such income. Now, this is the scenario. If we refer this section, nowhere it is mentioned that trust, if registered under section 12 AA, then only it is covered by 139.4A. Meaning thereby, if a trust is registered under section 12 AA or not, those returns are covered by section 139 4a if you are covered by section 139 4a if we we need to check in which itr form we need to file for that income tax de department notify the itr form every year and they also make the amendment of rule 12 they amend the rule 12 rule 12 is the actually main section wherein it is mentioned that which itr form shall be applicable each conditions are there so whatever we look into the income tax e-filing site the, those things only the uh, brief description what is uh, brief description is what is there on in rule number 12 so rule number 12 is the main criteria okay which form is applicable so if you refer rule 12 or anything even a site then itr 7 is applicable am i right but what is the problem if we refer itr if we file itr 7 and our trust doesn't have a 12 double a then application of income is not allowed as reduction the trust income is chargeable at a maximum marginal rate without giving the basic exemption of 2.5 lakh or slab rate benefit. So this is the problem. So now what we can do, first of all, if return is still to be filed, better you file ITR 5. Now, 
someone may ask if a legally itr 7 is applicable can we file the itr 5 my answer to that question is see for filing the wrong itr form there is no penalty in the income tax law any penalty in the income tax law will be enacted in this context when you don't pay the tax in a right amount meaning thereby let me say my capital gain is there short term capital gain which is chargeable at a slab rate what is the capital gain of short term for example 2 lakh i offer the same short term capital as the income from other sources and because of that reason my tax amount is right what tax amount i paid is a right but the income offered into the wrong head of income so now whether i offered the income in wrong head yes so can there be any penalty answer is no for offering the income in the wrong head there is no penalty same way for filing the wrong itr form there is no penalty so practically if you file the itr 5 for those trust which are charity which are public trust but not registered under section 12 aa then problem is resolved they allow the application of income as expenditure of a business so my first suggestion if you have any trust which is not registered under section 12 aa file the itr 5 in the same shall be process easily but limitation of that will be if the receipt is a more than 2 crore then audit shall be applicable otherwise also audit will be applicable because you are not registered under section 12 aa so the exemption of section 11 will not be available <laughs> is that done okay moving to next ganesh ji would request to uh, mute your mic if not required okay next so itr 5 now what happens what happens lot of time it may happen that we have filed the itr 7 now there is a uh, notice for the adjustment under section 143 1a so now can we file the itr 5 i have tried a few years back but if once you file the itr 7 the portal does not allow you to change the itr form still every year the new forms are notified so you cannot say because every year they are improvising your their portal so there are chances they may allow for, for a particular year to change the itr form so agar itr 5 change kar sakte ho kar dijiye agar wo bhi possible nahi hai then what you can do whenever the int uh, intimation is received under section 143 1 you will get a intimation order against that you can file the appeal so file the appeal with the three contention first thing if a 12 double is not there still basic exemption should be allowed income should not be charged as a maximum marginal rate and that amount spent for the purpose of trust should be allowed as a deduction as a business expenditure now lot of people may know uh, may have a query bhai agar trust registered nahi hai 12 double a mein to iska chargeability likha kahan par hai so we just have a skip section 164 is there and it is not over here but if you refer the section 164 usme likha hua hai if any trust is a public trust not registered under section 12 double a or exemption under section 11 is not available then such trust income shall be chargeable as a aop so aop means association of person meaning thereby basic exemption should be granted and at a slab rate should be charged to tax sure you get the presentation is that clear again i'm repeating one section 164 is very much clear that if a trust is not registered charitable sorry public trust is there not registered under section 12 aa still the same should be charged at a slab rate and should be charged as a uh, uh, should be charged as slab rate and basic exemption should be given now for example take a scenario you have filed the itr 7 there is a intimation wherein demand is there and within 30 days you forget to file the appeal now what is what is the recourse first recourse if a two years has not elapsed you can file the revision application with the commissioner under section 264 let me remind to everyone if some mistake is scrapped in a particular order then by the assessing officer which is prejudicial revenue then cit can take the action under section 263 which is against the assessee if we wanted to take the benefit which is eligibly available and you don't grant to us then we can ref we can approach to cit under section 264 wherein he has to grant the benefit if available so you can take the action in that section 
and if not possible two years is also lapsed what you can do file the rectification application under against that intimation and the same obviously will be rejected by the uh, cpc bangalore then after against the 154 order you can file the appeal and granting not this benefits obviously are mistake apparent on record so you will get the benefit in appeal am i clear now one more step further if you had a still demand against the trust which is not registered under section 12 double we galti ho gayi because lots of people have found this problem so what will be solution so before that let me take a scenario for example assessment year is a for example 18 19 is there this is which assessment is going on अब होगा क्या फॉर एग्जाम्पल उसमें आपने ट्वेल्व डबल ए का रजिस्ट्रेशन नहीं लिया है ओके डन असेसमेंट चल रहा है इफ ड्यूरिंग दैट टाइम पीरियड इफ यू मेक एन एप्लीकेशन फॉर ट्वेल्व डबल ए सो नाउ एप्लीकेशन इज मेड टूडे दैट इज असेसमेंट ईयर दैट इज अ प्रीवियस असेसमेंट ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू विल बी देर सो इफ माई ट्वेल्व डबल एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिस ईयर इज अलाउड सो इट विल बी अवेलेबल फॉर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू सो बिफोर फ्यू ईयर्स बैक they have made the amendment listen me very carefully if an application under section 12 double is made in 21 22 then that year basically assessment proceeding of earlier year is pending so in and then and trust objects are not changed in assessment year 18 19 and 21 22 then the benefit of 12 double a that is section 11 exemption has to be granted for 18 19 as well that is the amendment is am i making any sense just to prove the same this section 11 uh, sorry section 12 double a subsection 2 is there you can refer the same i am referring the same where an application has been made on or after so date provision of section 11 and 12 shall apply in relation to the income of such trust or institution from the assessment year immediately following the financial year in which such application is made sorry so if application is made in this year 21 22 the benefit will be available for assessment year 22 23 now <coughs> provided that where a registration has been granted to the trust or institution under section 12 double a kaun se saal mein mila financial year 21 22 mein then provision of section 11 12 shall apply in respect of any income derived from property held under trust of any assessment year preceding a four year assessment year for which assessment proceedings are pending before you as on the date of such registration so date of registration shall be granted the date on which you make the application though registration is granted after 6 months so if you think ki aapka koi trust hai jisme addition hone wala hai 12 aa ka registration nahi hai then you can make an application today agar wo 12 aa ka registration mil jata hai the assessing officer has to grant the benefit of the exemption of section 11 in 1819 as well is that clear now step further for example let's take a scenario today i make an application under section 12 double a for the my client trust and my the same trust appeal is pending for assessment is 16 17 in tribunal or cid appeal for example so now one of the amdavad tribunal and also mumbai tribunal why i am saying mumbai tribunal because if you file the appeal and you quote the mumbai tribunal it is binding to the cid appeal to follow the judgment so in this judgment of amdavad tribunal tribunal said agar appeal bhi pending hai to bhi that will be called the assessment proceedings are pending this word kaun sa word ye wala which assessment proceedings are pending so bhai ar ne bola ke even appeal is pending in front of the cid appeal that also should be considered as a assessment proceedings pending meaning thereby if my appeal is pending and by that time i get a 12 double a then for assessment is 16 17 also i should get a exemption of 12 double a or section 11 exemption that judgment is here i am referring the judgment has held that word pending assessment proceeding matlab ye wala assessment proceedings are pending will also include pending appellate proceedings relevant head notes are here please read the same ye wala hai
is that done so so what is the crux of this trust issue first of all if your trust is there which is charity uh, which is public trust agar 12 double hai idea 75 ka hai koi issue nahi hai agar charitable tr uh, public trust hai 12 double nahi hai go for itr 5 if your turnover or receipt is more than 2 crore get the accounts audited agar wo itr 5 file nahi kiya hai 7 file kar diya so try to file the itr 5 as a revised return if possible agar wo possible nahi hai to intimation aa dijiye intimation ke samne appeal kariye agar intimation aa chuka hai and you don't have to file the appeal and time limit is lapsed then file the rectification application against the same intimation and when you get the rectification order file the appeal against that order and during the pendency of the appeal procedure or a assessment procedure if you get a 12 double a then you can claim the exemption of a section 11 section 11 exemption you can claim for that pending appeal procedure also is that clear now after all this discussion see whatever i am discussing over here they most of the things are based on the judgments the judgments have their own limitations so i'll discuss that point also what are the limitation of judgments and how should you how you should deal with the thing i'm moving to next topic okay form number 10b okay what is 10b if the your trust is there which is registered under section 12 aa and the gross receipt of that charitable trust is a more than 2.5 lakh then the accounts of the trust has to be get audited under income tax law this is one of the condition to claim the exemption under section 11 okay now what is exemption if a trust receive 100 rupees spend 85 rupees in the same year then on the remaining 15 rupees the uh, the same shall not be charged to income tax and if you cannot spend 85% to be boss or or sir options hai jo which you can exercise so now form 10b now some because of some reason form 10b we file kab karna tha if you refer section 11 one of the condition is there to get the accounts of the trust audited agar nahi kiya hai then exemption shall not be allowed as the section mein likha hai sa in one of the condition mein now you are you don't file the 10b in the time uh, time limit then what shall be option now for assessment is 16 17 17 18 if the audit report of a trust is not filed in time but time as mentioned as section 139 1 but it is uh, filed before the end of the assessment year that is a late return late uh, late return is filed the same way report is filed late so if form 10b is filed after due date but before the time limit mentioned in section 139 well the end of the assessment year then delay should be condoned aisa kahan likha hai circular mein if for circular number 10 2019 if you are covered in this circular and you are delay if your assessment is 16 70 17 18 then you need to make an application to cit by quoting the circular the cit will grant the uh, will grant the condonation for filing the report late why i am doing so because agar ye report aapne time se file nahi kiya hai na at the time of processing the income tax return of your trust there will be uh, demand because exemption under section 11 would not be granted acha for example assessment year 17 18 hai so end of the assessment year is 31 march 2018 tab tak report ye audit report file nahi kiya then then still you can make the applications to cit and cit ko batana padega there must be some reason because of which we cannot file the audit report and if we found a satisfactory answer then cit is empowered to condone the delay ye dono cheeze kahan par likhi hai circular number 10 2019 then now next if the form 10b is filed late for assessment year 1819 or any subsequent assessment year then then circular number ne mention nahi kiya but another circular is there so yahi circular hai 10 10 2019 usme likha hai that if a delay is up to 365 days then cit is authorized to dispose of such application matlab in in short agar 365 days ka delay hai then normally cit condone the delay अगर उससे ज्यादा डिले है देन यू नीड टू मेक एन एप्लीकेशन सीबीडीटी सीबीडीटी विल डिसाइड वेदर दिस डिले शुड बी कंडोन और नॉट दिस इज फॉर असेसमेंट ईयर 1819 सब्सिक्वेंट असेसमेंट ईयर नाउ लेट्स टेक अ सिनेरियो अगर डिले 365 डेज से ज्यादा है एंड सीबीडीटी मे नॉट कंडोन द डिले तो और भी एक ऑप्शन है क्या करेंगे आपने रिटर्न आईटीएस 7 फाइल किया ऑडिट रिपोर्ट एमपी फाइल नहीं किया है तो दे विल डिसअलाउ योर डिडक्शन और एग्जेम्शन अंडर सेक्शन 11 so again then after you will receive the 143 one intimation 
Now, 143 one intimation is appealable, as we already discussed. Us 143 one ke intimation ke samne appeal kar dijiye, and there are lot of judgments are av available which says agar kuch sach mein genuine reason hai, so filing a form 10B is actually procedural matter. So when the same is already filed, agar wo file kar hi diya hai, then because of that reason, the delay should be condoned and exemption should be granted. This is judgment of the Gujarat High Court, and similar judgments are available for Mumbai High Court as well, as well as the Mumbai Tribunal. So we can take the advantage of this judgment in the appeal. Problem is there, this judgment can be used only in appeal because at the time of assessment, no one is going to hear you because there is a CPC Bangalore. Is that okay? Done? Any query for this part? Any query for this part? Okay, I hope that I make some uh, points which is relevant in the practice and moving to next topic. Just a minute. Okay. I think so. Screen is visible. Okay, done. See. See what is scenario. Uh, uh, return for example assessment year 1819 okay example lete assessment 1819 return file karna tha to kar diya uh, in the assessment 1819 and after assessment 1819 is completed to so 31st march 2019 ke baad there is a notice from the cpc bangalore that your return is defective you need to rectify the same and you rectify the same return somewhere in june 2019 So, in this case, what is the time limit to issue the notice of scrutiny assessment under section 143.2? If you refer section, limit to issue the notice is something like this. The notice under section 143.2 can be issued within a six months from the end of the assessment year in which return is filed. In our example, return is filed in 1819. The same is rectified in assessment year 1920. So, in a particular case, what happens? Assessing officer consider the uh, rectified return as a revised return or a original return. In our example, book a file was June 2019. So, uska 31st of March 2020. So, he issued the notice somewhere in the September 2020, which is six months from the end of the year, end of the financial year in which return is filed. Whether this is the right, so, in the Gujarat High Court, in case of Kunal Structure India Private Limited, which is also uh, uh, in, in that Gujarat High Court said that for calculating the limit under section 143.2, original return has to be considered. If the same is rectified, the re date of rectification is not relevant for this section. So because of this reason, doesn't matter how genuine addition is made by assessing officer, just because he missed the deadline, the addition, the rather assessment order will be quashed by the CIT appeal itself. You can you can also claim if you if you will claim this judgment in the time of assessment, there are chances he may initiate the reassessment. Huh? Now, after this judgment, department again moves to the Supreme Court, and Supreme Court also dismissed the appeal of the department in the same case. So now this judgment is final. Before that, I would like to make a point. Whenever Supreme Court, in Supreme Court, if any SLP is filed, that is special leave petition. So Supreme Court allow whether you need, uh, you can file the appeal or not. That is the SLP. If SLP is dismissed, meaning thereby appeal is not filed. If SLP is admitted, meaning thereby now appeal is filed. And now matter shall be heard on merits and uh, order shall be passed on the merits. So that appeal will be called normal appeal if it admit, SLP is admitted. Uh, that appeal become the civil application, civil petition. So over here, if a SLP is dismissed, it is not a binding. Huh? 
if only self is admitted and then after the uh, order is passed by saying uh, addition delete kiya hai wo barabar hai then only supreme court order is binding it is a supreme court judgment otherwise it is actually judgment of a gujarat high court hope that i am making some points relevant now something next very interesting lot of time what happens agar business hua hai business mein lag raha hai ki business ka receipts hai and that business receipts are in a particular bank account jo kabhi income mein offer kiya hi nahi hai if it is a business receipt the same is added now hota kya hai they are added under section 68 and now the tax is calculated under under section 115 bbe ab section 115 bbe mein kya hai tax is calculated at the rate of 60% 25% surcharge hai uspe lagega education says second education says so tax is higher but 115 bbe ka applicable applicable hoga when addition is made under section 68 69 69 a b or c now if any one of your client is there who has a business income business receipt which are not offered as a in the return and that business receipt is still a business income so it cannot be charged under section 68 or 69 because it is still a business income it has to be added as a income from business or profession if that is so whether tax rate mentioned under section 115 bb can be invoked answer is no this is held by gauhati tribunal now this 115 bb increase in the tax is just few years back that's why lots of tribunal judgment is not available and high court judgment is not clearly available because high court will need us some 7 8 years to get the matter on their board after amendment huh? in this case whenever any addition is made agar wo business receipt hai ya aisa laga kabhi hota hai na abhi short term capital gain hai return mein offer nahi kiya i'm just taking simple example there is a short term capital gain from shares under section 3118 or may i forget to take the same into income tax return now whether it is a section 68 addition because 68 addition says it should be a unexplained cash credit now it is not unexplained cash credit we explain it is a business income but obviously that is not offered as a income to so, wo add karna chahiye but as a short term capital gain so in that case it should be charged as a normal rate not at a rate mentioned in 115 bb lots of new judgment will be available in the future wherein you can take the same benefit so whenever any addition is made obviously by filing an appeal you can take one or other advantage if you cannot win you cannot get the addition deleted you can at least get the demand reduced am i right and a request would request to put your uh, uh, queries in the chat box huh, if any Shall I move to next and reply in the chat box? So I respond, Karna, because it's too difficult to speak to speak in front of the laptop or the computers, which now I'm habituated. Thank you, Tripathi ji, for always being responsive, at least in the chat box. Okay, next. Uh, I'm just taking para three in the later part, not as of now. If time permit, we'll take the same. It is something interesting, but not now. Okay. Uh, okay. One thing is there. I just this is something interesting, not relevant to directly income tax assessment, but for fi- uh, for something change is made. If we know in Finance Act uh, 2020, they make a very small change. Many of us has not noted down the changes in TDS provision. Okay. TDS ki konsi provision hai? Section 194A. C H I N J यहाँ पे लिखा हुआ है A C H I J ये कौन सा है interest payment C contract payment H commission I rent payment J है it is a professional fee now these all sections are applicable to individual H F only when their books of accounts are required to be audited under the section 44 A B for preceding previous year मतलब previous year ये भी कौन सा चल रहा है 21 बाई previous year है अगर बीस इक्कीस में वेदर आई एम कवरिंग फोर्टी फोर एबी ऑडिट इफ आंसर इज यस देन ओनली इन फाइनेंशियल ईयर ट्वेंटी वन ट्वेंटी टू आई विल बी कवरिंग दिस प्रोविजन नाउ टर्न ओवर लिमिट इन फोर्टी फोर एबी इज टू करोड़ अब तो देव चेंद प्रोविजन अगर पांच करोड़ तक टर्न ओवर है और नाउ इट इज टेन करोड़ इफ यूर टर्न ओवर इज अपू टेन करोड़ एंड योर कैश ट्रांजेक्शन आर रिस्ट्रिक्टेड ओनली टू फाइव परसेंट देन देर इज नो नीड टू गेट यूर अकाउंट ऑडिटेड So what is problem? 
turnover limit was drastically changed because of that they make the amendment in section 194 achij wherein it is mentioned agar aapka turnover 1 crore se zyada hai in case of business agar profession hai to 50 lakh then in that case individual hgf do not required to get their accounts audited has to deduct tds because now they are covered in section this sections so now take a scenario agar aap written file kar rahe ho apne ssc ka jiska turnover kitna hai individual hai turnover 2 crore se kam hai so now you are filing a return under section 44 ad presumed to taxation by declaring income of a uh, 8 8% uh, or 6% aapko lag raha hai bhi 194 ac hij mein kahan covered hai no now if that ssc which are covered in 44 ad turnover is more than 1 crore they are covered by the provision of tds of 194 ac hij so better to be careful on huh, this aspect now agar abo tds deduction nahi kiya to whether expenditure will be disallowed aapke ka ssc ke case mein the turnover is 1.5 cr so tds applicable hai ha as per amended provision but your client or ssc did not deduct the tds acha to so whether the expenditure will be disallowed as per section 40 aia apparently yes but if you refer section 44 ad in which your ssc is covered it is mentioned not be standing anything contain in section 28 to 43 c i guess the income shall be 6% or 8% of your turnover so as per my interpretation this allows nahi hona chahiye but yes department can ask you or rather your client to deposit the tds which you don't uh, pay the to department so wo minus point to rahega they obviously they can ask so so be careful for this amendment no we hidden hai. is it clear relevant tha आशीष बलगत जी ने क्वेरी रखी है ड्यूरिंग सर्वे एक्शन डिक्लेरेशन इज मेड अंडर सेक्शन बिजनेस इनकम स्टिल इट इज एडेड अंडर सेक्शन 68 ऑब्वियसली इट इज नॉट टेनेबल फाइल द अपील एंड कंटेंट टेक द बेनिफिट ऑफ द गोहाडी ट्रिब्यूनल एंड जस्ट वांटेड टू पुट अ पॉइंट दैट इट इज अ गोहाडी ट्रिब्यूनल और अहमदाबाद ट्रिब्यूनल सूरत मुंबई बेंगलोर चेन्नई एनी ट्रिब्यूनल वन ट्रिब्यूनल हैज टू फॉलो द जजमेंट ऑफ द अदर ट्रिब्यूनल सो देयर आर चांसेस योर मैटर मे not be accepted by cit appeal because jurisdictional tribunal or high court may not have a similar issue dealt with but if you file if you reach to tribunal you will get the benefit for sure and that has to be charged as a normal business income not as a uh, unexplained cash credit under section 68 ashish you hope that i have answered your query okay now just one more thing not directly into addition but टैक्स ऑडिट का पार्ट है लास्ट ईयर फाइनेंस एक्ट 2020 अच्छा थोड़ा ब्रीफ कर लेते हैं थोड़ा बहुत सेक्शन 44 ए बी सब सेक्शन आई गेस सब सेक्शन 2 इन द क्लॉज नंबर ए है इसमें लिखा हुआ है अगर आपका टर्नओवर 1 करोड़ से ज्यादा है तो 44 ए बी में कवर होंगे बाद में नीचे प्रोवाइज में लिखा है अगर 44 ए डी में कवर हो रहे हो और आपका टर्नओवर 2 करोड़ से ज्यादा है तो ऑडिट की जरूरत नहीं है मतलब 44 ए डी में कवर हो तो आपका इफेक्टिव टर्नओवर लिमिट विल बी टू करोड़ टू गेट अकाउंट्स ऑडिटेड अगर आप 44 एडी में कवर नहीं हो आपका टर्नओवर दो करोड़ से कम है और एक करोड़ से ज्यादा है कब हो सकता है फॉर एग्जांपल कंपनी एलएलपी दिस पीपल कैन नॉट टेक द बेनिफिट ऑफ अ प्रिजियमटिव टैक्सेशन अंडर सेक्शन फोर्टी फोर तो फिर भी उनका टर्न एक करोड़ से ज्यादा है यू नीड टू गेट दर अकाउंट ऑडिटेड सो फोर्टी फोर में कवर हो रहे हो टर्न लिमिट विल बी टू करोड़ फॉर ऑडिट अगर फोर्टी फोर एडी में कवर नहीं हो रहे हो तो टैक्स ऑडिट की लिमिट है एक करोड़ नाउ दे हैव एडेड द प्रोवाइज इफ यू आर डूइंग अ बिजनेस और आपका पेमेंट और रिसीट कैश में जो हुआ है वो फाइव परसेंट ही है टोटल पेमेंट रिसीट का देन योर टर्न ओवर लिमिट टू गेट द अकाउंट ऑडिटेड विल बी फाइव करोड़ ये अमेंडमेंट है फाइनेंस एक्ट टू का जो इक्कीस बाईस में अप्लीकेबल होने वाला था नाउ अगेन इन दिस फाइनेंस एक्ट टू दे इंक्रीज द लिमिट फॉर फ्रॉम फाइव करोड़ टू 10 करोड़ एंड इफेक्टिव फ्रॉम दिस असेसमेंट ईयर 21 22 तो फ्रॉम दिस असेसमेंट ईयर इफेक्टिव टर्नओवर लिमिट विल बी 10 करोड़ इफ योर क्लाइंट कैश रिसीट एंड पेमेंट इज रिस्ट्रिक्टेड टू ओनली 5% ऑफ देयर टोटल रिसीट्स एम आई क्लियर द प्रोवाइज इज ओवर हियर दैट इज अ वेरी साइलेंट अमेंडमेंट ना you we need to be careful for this
नाउ दिस अबो बेनिफिट इज ओनली एप्लीकेबल फॉर बिजनेस ओनली हो मतलब प्रोफेशन के लिए ऐसा कोई बेनिफिट नहीं है कि पाई 5% हुआ तो आपका ऑडिट नहीं लगेगा एनी क्वेरी फॉर दिस पार्ट एनी क्वेश्चन ओके मूविंग टू नेक्स्ट नाउ आई एम जस्ट रीडिंग द प्रोवाइजर प्रोवाइडेड दैट इन द केस ऑफ अ पर्सन whose aggregate of all amount received including amount to receive for sales turnover or gross receipts during the previous year in cash does not exceed 5% of the said amount and aggregate of all payment made including amount incurred for expenditure in cash during the previous year does not exceed 5% of the said payment matlab receipt ka aur payment ka dono mein aapka cash receipt and payment should be restricted to 5% अब यहाँ है ना ऐसा लिखा नहीं है कि सिर्फ सेल्स का पैसा ही मिलना चाहिए कोई भी यहाँ ऐसा नहीं लिखा है सेल्स का पैसा हो तो ही हम कंसीडर करेंगे फाइव परसेंट के लिए नहीं एवरी काइंड ऑफ पेमेंट और रिसीट्स आर कंसीडर तो इसमें होगा क्या यू नीड टू टेक अ प्रिंट आउट ऑफ दी बैंक अकाउंट एंड दी कैश अकाउंट तो कैश अकाउंट में कैश कितना रिसीव हुआ है कितना विदड्रॉ किया है आई मीन सॉरी कैश कितना रिसीव हुआ है इन द बैंक अकाउंट फॉर एग्जाम्पल फाइव लैक अब बैंक में पैसा कितना मिला है हमें फॉर एग्जाम्पल इट इज अन करोड़ अच्छा टोटल कितना हुआ पेमेंट रिसीव्ड इंक्लूडिंग बैंक एंड कैश दैट इज अ फाइव लैक इन कैश वन करोड़ इन बैंक तो वन करोड़ इन फाइव लैक इज अ रिसीट अच्छा तो फाइव लैक इज अ कैश टोटल वन लैक फाइव वन करोड़ फाइव लैक का फाइव परसेंट कितना होगा ऑब्वियसली पांच लाख से ज्यादा होगा तो आपका कैश रिसीट है वो फाइव से कम है आंसर इज यस तो फर्स्ट कंडीशन इज फुलफिल्ड नाउ सेम वे ऑन दी दिस इज अ रिसीट नाउ वेरीफाई द पेमेंट साइड Am I clear? Okay. The same way on the payment side, you need to verify the payment side. And if the payment is restricted to five percent in cash, then this ten crore limit is applicable to your clients, and they need not to get their accounts audited. Huh? Just a minute. Huh? तक एक सेमिनार में कॉल बैक करूं जस्ट अ मिनट हां ओके एम आई ऑडिबल एम आई ऑडिबल यस यस सर जस्ट अ मिनट आई आई थिंक आई देयर इज सम ओके डन एनी क्वेरी फॉर दिस पार्ट then put the same in the chat box otherwise i'm moving to next topic okay done just a minute It will take one minute, ah, huh, for me. Is the screen visible? Yes, visible. Okay, done. Uh, see, other thing, uh, loss of time. What happens? Uh, 
section 68 addition is made for the unsecured loan basic things are there sometimes assessing officer missed to note it out section 68 addition is basically for unexplained cash credit for example in assessment in 1819 if there is a opening unsecured loan of a rupees 10 lakh whether same can be subject matter of addition if we refer section 68 if any amount found to be credited in books of account that is a wording in section 68 so effectively that credit should be credited in the same assessment year just a minute ओके okay, हमारे अहमदाबाद ब्रांच के चेयरमैन जी का फोन आ गया अभी वो मोमेंट सेवेंटी थ्री में बहुत बिजी है विच इज अल्थ मूवमेंट विच इज गुड बनाई गेस ओके डन सो वट आई एम सींग इफ अनसिक्योर लोन इज आउटस्टैंडिंग एज अ ओपनिंग बैलेंस वेदर सेम कैन बी सब्जेक्ट मैटर ऑफ एडिशन इन असेसमेंट एटीन नाइनटीन आंसर इज नो तो कब हो सकता है फॉर एग्जाम्पल दैट लोन इज रिसीव इन द फाइनेंशियल ईयर सिक्सटीन सेवनटीन तो वो असेसमेंट इज सेवनटीन एटीन का असेसमेंट है ना उसमें एडिशन हो सकता है इफ द असेसिंग ऑफिसर मिस दी असेसमेंट इज सेवनटीन एटीन then after that addition cannot be made in the subsequent assessment year ha 17 18 mein karna hai to reassessment kar sakta hai 18 19 mein addition nahi kar sakta it is a very basic thing but most of the are uh, most of the people don't verify this thing even assessing officer if we found a mistake in this thing doesn't matter how valid the addition otherwise is same will not be tenable in the appellate proceedings so one should be careful about this thing now सी आई हैड डन ऑल द थिंग्स मैंने एक पॉइंट मिस कर दिया था जजमेंट वाला तो बहुत ही अच्छा है आई एम जस्ट टेकिंग दैट पॉइंट नाउ दिस वन ओके सी सी वॉट एवर डिस्कशन वी आर मेकिंग इन दिस सेशन दी ऑल जजमेंट आर बेसिकली बेस्ड ऑन दी जजमेंट So can can we take this benefit of judgment in the assessment proceedings? So there are some limitations, rather lots of limitations. But in appellate proceedings, benefits are largely available. So what are the limitations? So I'm taking first one: judgments which are based on mistake of a AO during the assessment proceedings. मतलब, for example, उसने notice to issue की है assessing officer ने under section 143.2, it is not issued within the time limit. If we show this mistake at the assessment time, obviously he will try. to reassess the income after completing the assessment agar laga to so he can rectify his mistake for example lots of judgments are available if a penalty under section 271c that is the uh, concealment of the income or uh, furnishing in accurate particulars agar dono mein se ek bhi agar hua hai then section 271c penalty can be levied so lots of tribunal high court has held ki whenever penalty notice is issued assessing officer has to mention one of the limb very clearly ke why he is issuing the notice whether he is issuing the notice for the concealment of the income or for furnishing in accurate particulars agar wo clarify nahi kiya hai agar standard format mein dono limb available hai aur ek bhi strike off nahi kiya hai then penalty will be completely null and void ab ye mistake aap assessment ke liye dikha sakte ho answer is no so this benefit will be available in appellate proceedings wherein the penalty itself is a cancelled so some judgments are there jiska benefit of assessment ke time nahi le sakte second thing some judgments which are not accepted by department matlab take any judgment ab ye judgment for example aap quote karoge so what assessing officer has to check whether against that judgment the department has filed further appeal if yes eo can always say that we have not accepted that judgment as a final that's why we are open we are allowed to make the addition on the same point गुजरात हाईकोर्ट का या मुंबई बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट का जजमेंट है यू कोर्ट द सेम बट अगेंस्ट दैट बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट जजमेंट दी डिपार्टमेंट मूव टू सुप्रीम कोर्ट द एओ इज फ्री टू मेक द एडिशन बिकॉज डिपार्टमेंट स्टिल नॉट एक्सेप्टेड दैट वर्डिंग ऑफ दी ऑनरेबल बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट पर अगर वही एडिशन करने के बाद अगर आप फर्स्ट सीआईटी अपील में गए तो क्या होगा तो सीआईटी अपील विल से एज ए बॉम्बे हाईकोर्ट जजमेंट इज स्टिल बाइंडिंग क्योंकि सुप्रीम कोर्ट ने रिवर्स नहीं किया है So CIT appeal has to follow the Bombay High Court judgment, and he has to delete the addition. Hope that I'm making some points. And now this is the future, huh? Because every everything is faceless. If you make a single mistake in the presentation in the faceless mode, addition will be there. Not because you were wrong, because you don't present the matter properly. 
I will touch upon this area also, how to present the things. Now, last thing, sorry, uh, second ho gaya, or sometimes what happens, second points mein hi hai. For example, Bombay High Court ka apne judgment hai. Achha, to Bombay High Court has uh, allowed the appeal and delete the addition. Ab wohi facts aapke SSC ke case mein hai. Ab us case mein, Bombay High Court wale case mein SSC don't file the appeal in Supreme Court. Why? Because tax effect was below 1 crore. So there is a departmental circular. CBDT circular is there is mein likha hai. That department will not file the Further appeal to Supreme Court, agar tax effect ek crore se zyad kam hai to, uska matlab kya hua? Usme wo bhi likha hai. Agar is vajah se humne appeal file nahi kiye department ne, then meaning thereby Bombay High Court judgment is not accepted by department. Meaning thereby they will make the addition in the case of the other assessee if the effects are same. Samajh mein aa raha hai? But if you file the appeal, to aapko benefit turan mil jayega. Hope that I am making some relevant points. So limitations are there of the just a minute. Yeah. If client still wants to get books audited, even though not applicable, then how to deal with it? Okay, one query is there. Uh, see, uh, uh, answer to Sandeep Ji Khandelwal. Uh, if your assessee wanted to get their books of account audited, so for example, if it is more than 1 crore, 10 crore, se kam hai, 5 percent criteria, hai. Toh, usme kya hai? you can get the accounts audited, there is no issue. System will still accept the audit report. And whenever you file the, sorry, whenever, whenever you file the income tax return for that assessee, in the return form they ask ki whether your cash payments and receipts are restricted to 5 percent, so don't do it. So automatically, ITR form will understand that in this case, audit is required because turnover is above 1 crore and below 10 crore. Am I clear? Am I clear, Sandeep ji? Okay, done. Thank you. Now, I'm moving to next, fourth one. Judgment is applicable. Nahi honge. See what happens sometimes uh, in a, uh, if you are sitting in Nasik, your assess is based in Nasik, the Bombay High Court judgment is binding all over the Maharashtra. But Gujarat High Court judgment is not binding in the assessing officer sitting in the Nasik. So some judgment are not of title High Court or Tribunal, then they can choose not to follow. And last is conflicting judgment. Malab, do alag -alag high court hai. Karnataka High Court and Gujarat High Court. Do not alag -alag judgment. Hai. So assessing officer will take a course which is a beneficial to revenue, not your SSE. In that case, obviously in appeal, we can get the benefit. Done? Uh, some other points are there, which are not I'm supposed to discuss. See what happens at the assessment level, though judgments is clearly applicable, still lots of assessing, assessing officer don't follow the same. So there is one judgment of the Supreme Court in Kamlaxi Finance Corporation in context to excise. It's been written why that order of the tribunal or high court is binding to AO, he has to follow the same. Agar nahi karte, then we can ask the disciplinary action in front uh, against the AO. Or ye requirement put on karin paiki sibiriti ke saamne. That will be lengthy thing. We may not prefer to do that activity. So AO agar follow nahi karte, still we cannot do anything against him. Done? Now, just another point. Now my query is there to everyone, to all the 84 participants. Is anyone is facing the uh, problem in derivative transaction that how to report an income tax return and how to decide the turnover limit for derivative for tax audit? Any problem is there for this aspect? Great, one person has said yes. Again, I'm repeating the query. If your assessee has a derivative transaction, first of all, whether audit is applicable under income tax, how to decide the same in case of derivative transaction. Second thing, usme income kaise offer karenge in the books of account. Few people have, Rahul ji has. Okay, I'm just touching upon that area. Yes, whether it's business income or for audit applicability. Okay, great. So I'm just touching upon that area. So how to deal with the derivative transaction? 
first of all i would request to all the people to rachid rahul ji sahil ji and sagar ji to put your exact query so i just touch upon those areas because that topic is too large if i am start taking that topic it will take up maybe uh, one hour to complete the session so i would request to put your specific query first query is there whether is a business income for audit applicability my answer to that query is there see section 43 sub section 5 which define the speculative transaction if you refer that section in that exceptions are given that which transactions are not a speculative in that exception one of the transaction is derivative transaction so if a transaction is a derivative it will not be speculative except this section nowhere in the income tax law it is the defined that derivative transaction will be termed as a business income or a capital gain same way like in income tax nowhere it is defined if you do a loss of trading in shares whether it is your business transaction or it is a capital gain and still disputes are going on whenever loss of tra share transactions took place department will always say it is your business transaction because in that case they can charge the highest rate of tax that is 30% above 10 lakh of income and assessee would always claim it is a capital gain because in that case beneficial taxation of 10% 20% is available so as per my understanding there is no clarity is available so whenever you filing a return no clarity available better to select the safer side over here safer side is to offer the derivative income as a business income okay because if you we don't want to fall into litigation your client don't want to fall into litigation so ask him that if you offer as a capital gain there are chances the department take the adverse view if is if is ready to take the risk you can offer the derivative transaction as a capital gain otherwise offered it as a business income am i clear so first answer is there offered the derivative transaction as a business income now second option turnover how to report okay how to report turnover second query is also same how to calculate turnover do we have to add loss in turnover can we make a benefit of section 44 ad okay now next question intraday is a business income see first of all intraday in the intraday you don't take the delivery if you don't take the delivery it will be speculative so speculative is relevant when it is a business income speculative income and a other speculative income is a two bifurcation of business income now no again my answer is same for intraday nowhere it is a mentioned that it will be a business income or it is a capital gain because definition of capital asset is wide and scope of business income is wide so again my answer if the whenever intraday is there better to show it as a business income so i'm touching up on this area now how to calculate turnover there is something interesting first of all let me uh, clarify definition of turnover is not mentioned in the income tax act itself so if you refer any section section 2 or section 44 ad ab turnover definition is not there so how to calculate the same answer to that is something like this i'm sharing a per screen just in one minute whatever i'm going to discuss over here it is everything is backed is with some material if you wanted to take the note of the same you can do the same or you get the ppts which i am showing you over here okay done so how to report the fndo transaction in itr or derivative transaction basically first of all definition is there in income tax law answer is no definition is definition is not there so now where definition is available our institute I, institute of chartered accountants of india has issued the guidance note with the name tax audit under section 44 ab of the act in that meaning of turnover is defined for derivative transaction and future in option r is under para number 5.14 hai uska iska hi number hai 5.14 you can refer directly over there speculative hai aur ye first speculative hai second is derivative future and option last is delivery based transaction if we refer b and a in the both the places is clearly mentioned whenever it is speculative transaction or it is a derivative future options to so, what turnover kaise ginna hai to aapko turnover difference ka ginna hai meaning thereby i for example book a future option derivative Where my exposure is hundred rupees. If uh, uh, exposure means if shares ka hundred rupees hua, I can buy the shares hundred rupees after three months. So my exposure is 
of rupees hundred. Acha. After two months, uh, when where I can buy the shares at hundred, what was the price? That is, for example, one zero two. So I bought the same answer is no. So in this case, I make a loss of rupees two. एक काम करते हैं सिंपल रखते हैं डेरिवेटिव रखते हैं डेरिवेटिव में मेरे पास राइट क्या है टू सेल द शेयर्स आफ्टर टू मंथ्स उसकी प्राइस अभी क्या है अभी है उसकी प्राइस हंड्रेड आफ्टर टू मंथ्स व्हाट इज द प्राइस वन हंड्रेड एंड टू आई सेल द सेम तो मुझे कितना प्रॉफिट हुआ दो टू रुपीज फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन इन दिस ट्रांजेक्शन माई टर्न ओवर विल बी डिफरेंस ऑफ दिस टू ट्रांजेक्शन दैट इज अ टू रुपीज इन सेकेंड ट्रांजेक्शन फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई परचेज द डेरिवेटिव वेरी नाइ अगेन हैव ऑप्शन टू सेल द शेयर्स at a, for example 100 now in this transaction in this transaction for example actual price was 95 and i i has to sell the uh, uh, share uh, shares at 95 rupees so i make a loss of 5 rupees usme bhi option alag alag hote hai future and options mein future mein compulsory set off kar dena padta hai option mein i have a right to sell or not to sell so for example yahan mujhe 95 mein sell kar dena hai so what is my loss 5 rupees so the with the transaction my loss is minus 5 earlier transaction my profit is 2 ab isme se sign nikal dijiye so minus nikal dijiye so 5 plus 2 will be 7 so 7 is my turnover i am assuming only this two transaction took place sha yeah, sir sha yeah, sir ha ah, please rahul yeah uh, my query is exactly like kya bhai main agar option write karta hu ha matlab 100 rupaye mein main sell karta hu ha barabar hai option mein 100 तो और मैं उसको अगर नीचे दो आफ्टर टू मंथ्स और आफ्टर मंथ्स आई आई कवर ऑन फाइव रुपीज फाइव रुपीज इज माई प्रॉफिट तो माई टर्न ओवर विल बी नाइनटी फाइव और हंड्रेड नहीं नहीं आपका ऑप्शन था आपने हंड्रेड का ऑप्शन था ना हंड्रेड में आप सेल कर सकते हो नहीं नहीं मेरा सो मेरा स्ट्राइक प्राइस जो है वो हंड्रेड है और हंड्रेड का मैंने राइट ऑफ किया वन हंड्रेड फिफ्टी में 150 acha okay okay so 50 rupees is my profit yes the 50 rupees will be your turnover hmm. 50 will barabar to maine jab main write off kar raha hu tab mera turnover jab main buy karunga usko ha maine short sell kiya hai in short ha because kya ho raha hai ki yahan par jo diya hai na usme apan net day to day balance jo hai usko turnover mein le rahe hain nahi wo nahi karna hai aapko hai na har ek transaction ka jo profit and loss hai na that will be your turnover simple logic राहुल जी और ऑप्शन ऑप्शन और फ्यूचर दोनों में अगर आप ट्रांजेक्शन में फाइनली एंटर हुए और उस ट्रांजेक्शन का आपका प्रॉफिट हुआ लॉस हुआ मेरा प्रॉफिट हुआ ऑप्शंस के अंदर हुआ प्रॉफिट फॉर एग्जांपल फर्स्ट ट्रांजेक्शन में फॉर एग्जांपल प्रॉफिट हुआ दो रुपए का सेकंड ट्रांजेक्शन में लॉस हुआ पांच रुपए का बराबर तो मेरा टर्न हो गया सेवन रुपीज एग्जैक्टली सर परफेक्ट हाँ पर इसमें फ्यूचर एंड ऑप्शन में डेली सेटलमेंट फ्यूचर में डेली सेटलमेंट होता है बराबर बराबर है तो अपने को जो टर्न ओवर काउंट करना है फ्यूचर्स में वो डे बेसिस के ऊपर करना है अपने जो को करना है फ्यूचर का टर्न ओवर वो डे बेसिस पे कैलकुलेट करना है या मैंने जिस दिन परचेस किया और जिस दिन सेल की जब ट्रांजैक्शन सेटल हुआ उसके बाद जो प्रॉफिट लॉस हुआ उसकी बात कर रहा हूं ओके okay. मतलब से वर्क स्टॉक मार्केट में रिपोर्टिंग कैसे होती है वो टर्न कैसे गिनते हैं उससे हमारा यहां कोई लेना देना नहीं है एग्जैक्टली exactly, मैं को वही चीज का थोड़ा सा कंफ्यूजन है वही मैं क्लियर करने की कोशिश कर रहा हूं हां बराबर ओके okay. जब आपका ट्रांजैक्शन सेटल हो जाएगा ना व्हेनेवर यू सेटल योर ट्रांजैक्शन डेरिवेटिव एट दैट टाइम व्हाट इज योर प्रॉफिट और लॉस दैट विल बी योर दैट विल बी योर टर्नओवर ओके अगर उसमें माइनस लॉस है तो आपको माइनस साइन नहीं करनी है जस्ट टू कैलकुलेट टर्नओवर हां एग्जैक्टली यस यस दैट इज सेम थिंग इज मेंशन ओवर हियर पर है क्या ये चीज बहुत लंबी आई एम गोइंग टू रीड इट आउट वो लंबा हो जाएगा ठीक है ना एंड नाउ वन थिंग अब ये तो लिखा है गाइडेंस नोट में प्रोसेसिंग ऑफिसर को कैसे बाइंड होगा नाउ इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स आई कैन से इन वन ऑफ द केसेस व्हाट हैपेंस इन द इनकम टैक्स लॉ देयर वाज नो डेफिनेशन ऑफ मैनी मैन्युफैक्चरिंग वो आई थिंक सेक्शन 10 ए के कॉन्टेक्स में था वो डेफिनेशन हमने आईसीआई के गाइडेंस नोट में थी दे टेक दैट डेफिनेशन एज अ वैलिड एंड इंटरप्रेट द स्टैच्यू एंड गिव द बेनिफिट सो अकॉर्डिंग टू ओवर हियर आल्सो वी कैन क्लेम द सेम बट इसमें यहां प्रॉब्लम क्या है डेरिवेटिव में ये जो जो टर्न ओवर कैलकुलेशन का जो प्रॉब्लम है ना वो प्रॉब्लम है जस्ट टू डिसाइड वेदर ऑडिट इज एप्लीकेबल और नॉट अगर ऑडिट नहीं हुआ तो पेनल्टी कितनी होगी डेढ़ लाख अब डेढ़ लाख के लिए मैटर है ना हाईकोर्ट तक पहुंचती नहीं है तो ट्रिब्यूनल तक पहुंच गई है एम आई क्लियर टू एवरी 
Okay, so that is the scenario. The details are mentioned over here. Huh? This is the nothing but a para 5.14 of the guidance note. उसमें वही चीज लिखी हुई है. You can refer the same. आराम से पढ़ लीजिए ये वाला पोर्शन एटलिस्ट सर वही मैं पढ़ रहा था सेकंड नंबर जो दिया है ना प्रीमियम रिसीव्ड ऑन सेल ऑफ ऑप्शन इज आल्सो टू बी इंक्लूडेड इन टर्नओवर यस 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 मैं मैं ऑप्शन सेल कर रहा हूं तो जो मुझे प्रीमियम मिल रहा है 15 रुपीस और 150 रुपीस वो पूरा टर्नओवर होगा ना नहीं नहीं आपका ट्रांजैक्शन पहले पूरा बताइए मुझे मैं ऑप्शन को प्रीमियम पे सेल कर रहा हूं ऑप्शंस को सेल कर रहा हूं मेरा स्पेसिफिक क्यूरी है ऑप्शंस के बारे में हां और पुट के बारे में है मेरा स्पेसिफिक क्यूरी एफएंड के बारे में नहीं है हां बराबर है मैं अगर ऑप्शन को राइट कर रहा हूं या कॉल को मैं राइट कर रहा हूं कॉल राइटर हूं मैं तो मेरा जो टर्नओवर है वो क्या बोल के कैलकुलेट होगा मेरा को जितना मैंने से 100 रुपीस का स्ट्राइक प्राइस मैंने 150 पे बेचा तो मेरा टर्नओवर 150 होगा या मैंने उसको बाद में 4 रुपए मैंने 100 रुपए पे उसको कवर किया तो मेरा 50 होगा नहीं 50 हो एक मिनट आपने इसमें प्रीमियम आपको मिला प्रीमियम इस ट्रांजैक्शन में प्रीमियम मिला है आई एम कॉल राइट कितना मिला प्रीमियम 150 नहीं प्रीमियम थोड़ी वो तो स्ट्राइक प्राइस है ना नहीं 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 मैं से, अभी मैं उसको अलग से कहता हूं मैंने समझो HDFC का शेयर है 1500 रुपए का स्ट्राइक प्राइस है हां वो तो मैंने 100 रुपए पे बेचा 100 रुपए तो पे बेचा तो हां मतलब मैंने 1500 का स्ट्राइक प्राइस मैंने 1600 में बेचा हां हां तो 100 रुपीस मुझे प्रीमियम मिला बराबर हां अब नाम और अभी वो वो प्रीमियम मैंने बाद में 40 रुपीस पे कवर कर लिया नहीं कवर मत करो ट्रांजैक्शन वाइज देखना हमें यहां पर तो मेरा मेरा टर्नओवर कितना होगा नहीं नहीं पहली बात आप दो ट्रांजैक्शन मिक्स मत करो पहला ट्रांजैक्शन मेरा राइट ऑफ का है मतलब सॉरी ऑप्शन का प्रीमियम मैंने खाया एक मिनट राहुल जी राहुल जी फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आपने जो सेट ऑफ किया है ना सेट ऑफ की बात मत करिए पहले इस ट्रांजैक्शन में क्या हो इसकी बात करते हैं चलेगा सर बोलिए यहां टर्नओवर हमें ट्रांजैक्शन वाइज देखना है ओके okay. अब मैं यहां पढ़ रहा हूं टोटल ऑफ फेवरेबल एंड अनफेवरेबल डिफरेंस शैल बी टेकन एज अ टर्नओवर तो आपने वो स्ट्राइक प्राइस सेल की फॉर हंड्रेड तो हंड्रेड रुपीज आपको प्रीमियम मिला तो वो आपका टर्न ओवर में आ जाएगा ओके नाउ व्हेन द ट्रांजैक्शन इज फाइनली सेटल्ड ठीक है ना तब उसने कितने में परचेस किया था फाइनली आपके पास से सोलह सो में सोलह सो में मेरे से किसी ने परचेस किया किया फाइनली इसमें ऑप्शन में किया ना फाइनल किया इन तो आपको लॉस हुआ सौ का बराबर और सौ का लॉस हुआ तो सौ रुपए विल बी टर्न ओवर एंड प्रीमियम कितना चार्ज किया सौ रुपए हाँ तो आपका टर्न ओवर दो सौ रुपए हो गया एग्जैक्टली आई वॉट आई जस्ट वॉन्ट टू नो दैट मैं फिर से बोल रहा हूँ ट्रांजेक्शन वाइज आपको जो भी लॉस या प्रॉफिट हुआ है इस केस में आपने लॉस किया सौ रुपए का hmm. और जो प्रीमियम चार्ज किया है वो आपको सब कुछ एड करना है एड करना है विदाउट कंसिडरिंग द साइन ऑफ दैट ट्रांजेक्शन ओके थैंक यू ठीक है ना एंड आफ्टर ऑल्सो इफ यू रिफर दिस गाइडेंस नो इट इज ए वेरी एग्जॉस्टिव आपको इस तरह से भी क्लियर हो जाएगा यस सर यस थैंक यू ओके सो दिस इज द वे यू नीड टू कैलकुलेट द टर्न ओवर नाउ दिस ऑल कैलकुलेशन इज रिक्वायर्ड ओनली टू नो कि आपका टर्न ओवर 2 करोड़ या 1 करोड़ से ज्यादा है कि नहीं अगर ज्यादा है देन यू नीड टू गेट योर अकाउंट्स ऑडिटेड नाउ एज़ फार एज़ द इनकम इज कंसर्न तो रिपोर्ट्स आर अवेलेबल फ्रॉम द ब्रोकर वेरी इन डिटेल फ्रॉम वेयर यू कैन आइडेंटिफाई कि एग्जैक्टली आपका प्रॉफिट हुआ या लॉस हुआ है एक्सपेंडिचर कितना है वो भी लेस कर दीजिए अगर बिजनेस इनकम ऑफर कर रहे हो तो अगर बिजनेस इनकम ऑफर कर रहे हो तो आपको एसटीडी पे डिडक्शन मिलेगा because it is a business expenditure which is otherwise specifically allowed under the business head so by that way you can prepare the books of account books of account preparation bhi bahut complications hai aur main usme detail mein nahi ja raha theek hai now these are some of the judgments jisme 44 ab mein audit ke liye context mein turnover ki baat hai na uski baat hui hai usme bhi wahi conclusion hai more or less and one of the judgment is mumbai high court in 2014 ये रहा इन केस ऑफ स्पेक्युलेटिव बिजनेस व्हेन डिलीवरी इज नॉट टेकन देन इफ टोटल ऑफ प्रॉफिट और लॉस ऑफ ईच स्पेक्युलेटिव ट्रांजैक्शन इज मोर देन 40 मतलब यहां भी वही बोल रहा है कि आपको हर एक के ट्रांजैक्शन का डिफरेंस ढूंढिए उस डिफरेंस का एडिशन करिए विदाउट कंसीडरिंग साइन तो आपका 40 लाख से ज्यादा है तब लिमिट 40 लाख थी तो आपका टर्नओवर में 44 एबी में कवर हो जाएगा ठीक है नाउ वन मोर थिंग ये तो टर्नओवर की बात हुई अब अगर टर्नओवर की बात आ रही है 44 एबी की बात आ रही है तो आईसीडीएस भी चेक करना पड़ेगा बिकॉज़ द आईसीडीएस नाउ एप्लीकेबल फ्रॉम असेसमेंट ईयर 1819 इफ यू रिफर द आईसीडीएस प्रोविजन फ्रॉम आईसीडीएस प्रोविजन आल्सो देयर इज नो क्लैरिटी अवेलेबल दैट हाउ टू कैलकुलेट टर्नओवर फॉर डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजैक्शन 
जो रिस्पेक्टिव डेफिनेशन है वो यहाँ पे लिखी हुई है फ्रॉम दैट इट इज नॉट क्लियरली पॉसिबल टू गिव दंक्लूजन और अर्लियर कंक्लूजन विल प्रिवेल दैट डिफरेंस ऑफ ईच ट्रांजेक्शन विल बी टेकन एज अ टर्न ओवर एंड मेक द एडिशन टू कैलकुलेट टोटल टर्न ओवर Please check the same. Shall I move to next? Okay, now I'm just have covered the definition of a derivative transaction and feature option. This transaction will not be speculative because that are covered by 43 subsection 5. Section 43 subsection 5 talks about what is the meaning of speculative transaction. In that, exceptions are given, provided that for the purpose of this clause shall not be deemed to be speculative transaction. इसमें ये दोनों है derivative. But इसका मतलब ये नहीं the derivative transaction should be treated as a business income only. If it is a business income, it should it will not be a speculative. Is that clear? So now, what is scenario? If forty four AD me, if individual is HUF, derivative ka turn over jo humne ki na, if it is two crore se kam hai, we can we go for forty four AD? Otherwise. Is yes, then yes we can declare the six percent eight percent. Because in this, what will happen? You are already aware that you have exactly profit. How much? So I would better refer that whatever actual profit is there, the same should be offered as income. If it is more than six or eight percent, if your turnover, is, if your uh, actual profit is rather loss in derivative, you make the loss. So you cannot declare less than six percent. In that case, get your account audited. If otherwise, you fall into forty four eighty in earlier years. अच्छा अगर द पर्सन हु एंटर इनटू डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजैक्शन इज नॉट कवर्ड बाय 44 एडी देन लिमिट इज अबो 1 करोड़ यस 2 से 5 करोड़ 2 से और सॉरी 1 करोड़ से 10 करोड़ है अगर कैश ट्रांजैक्शन 5% से कम है देन देयर इज नो नीड टू गेट योर अकाउंट्स ऑडिटेड जो नया अमेंडमेंट है क्लियर दैट्स ऑल अबाउट दिस पॉइंट एनी क्वेरी फॉर दिस डेरिवेटिव ट्रांजैक्शन अच्छा सेट ऑफ की बात कर रहे हो ना मकरन जी महत गुरु जी इसी एज फार एज डेरिवेटिव इनकम इज कंसर्न डेरिवेटिव इनकम इफ कंसिडर इज अजनेस ऑफर्ड एज अजनेस इनकम इट इज अजनेस लॉस इफ इट इज अरेवेटिव लॉस नाउ डेरिवेटिव इज अट अटिव इट विल बी नॉर्मल लॉस वंस डेरिवेटिव लॉस इज ऑफर्ड एज अजनेस लॉस सेम कैन बी कैरी फॉरवर्ड इन दी सक्सिडिंग इयर्स सेम कैन बी सेट ऑफ अगेंस्ट द बिजनेस इनकम एज पर दी नॉर्मल प्रोविजन If you offer derivative loss or profit as a capital gain, then it is short term or long term. You need to check. Accordingly, set of rules shall be applicable. Is that clear? There is no specific uh, set of provision for derivative loss. Okay. Now, uh, one more point is there. See, lots of time, what happens? This is the last point I'm trying to cover orally. Plus, of time in the assessment proceedings, uh, income is added or our business receipts are added. Just wanted to make a one point: the hell lot of judgments are available, wherein clearly held whenever assessing officer found that it is a business receipt, the total business receipt should not be added. Rather, only net profit containing this business should be added. If net profit calculate नहीं कर सकते तो then 6% or 8% of that business receipt should be added so loss of time because of this judicial pronouncement a big benefit is available in the appellate proceedings very few are aware of the same and loss of judgments are available there is a query from the ashish ji how to report derivative income or loss in itr under business income or loss ab karenge kya first of all aapka derivative mein jo income ya loss to an exactly it has to be offered in the itr form in the business head हाँ टर्न ओवर उसका अकाउंट बिजनेस वो अकाउंट कैसे बनाएंगे वो दिक्कत वाली बात है जो लॉस होगा वो डेबिट साइड दिखा दीजिए जो प्रॉफिट है वो क्रेडिट साइड दिखा दीजिए दस द वे यू कैन डू एंड वन थिंग अगर करेंगे क्या हमारा ओरिजिनल ट्रांजेक्शन टू रुपीज पॉजिटिव है तो इनकम साइड अगर फाइव रुपीज नेगेटिव है लॉस है तो वो शो करिए परचेज साइड तो फाइव प्लस टू विल बी योर टर्न 
सेवन रुपीज जो टर्न ओवर है ना वो आपके बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट से डायरेक्टली मैच तो नहीं होगा एंड टर्न ओवर वॉट वी आर कैलकुलेटिंग ओनली फॉर कैलकुलेट एप्लीकेबिलिटी फोर्टी फोर ए बी ऑडिट तो आई में तो आपको बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट बनाइए आपका जो नेगेटिव है ट्रांजेक्शन वो परचेज साइड पॉजिटिव ट्रांजेक्शन है वो क्रेडिट साइड और प्रॉफिट सेल साइड आपका जो एक्सपेंडिचर एस टी टी ब्रोकरेज वो एक्सपेंडिचर दिखाइए और आपका एक्चुअल प्रॉफिट वही होगा जो आपके ब्रोकर रिपोर्ट कर रहे हैं That's the way you need to prepare the books of account, and that's the way you need to report in the ITR. But as then, in IT, ITR will have to report as a turnover, uh, income as a turnover, and expenditure as a purchases. Expenditure, see, loss, uh, loss, loss, loss transaction. You can report in the purchase side, or you can report as a negative figure, or rather, set off on the credit side or sales side. You can do both. Because that is a technical difficulty. Right now, we are reporting under other head of expenses. Don't do so. Better that you show it as a purchase side losses and profit, uh, profitable transaction. Show it as a sales side, a credit side in the trading account. Then how we are going to go for forty four ED then? If we show it net or see how to calculate turnover? Wo income tax me clear nahi hai. That's why we take the help of the guidance note. A guidance note, जिस तरह turnover गिनने के लिए बोला है, ना वो amount आपके books of account से tally तो हो नहीं सकती, obvious है. ठीक है ना तो tally नहीं होगी. You need to explain it to assessing officer. अगर वो assessment में select होता है तो. Yeah, let's see how it is coming in pre-filled ITR now. ITR तो हर साल एक जैसे ही आएंगे. उसमें कोई ज़्यादा changes नहीं है. Now department is coming with prefilled form, na? Let's see how they are report. How they are going to report it? <laughs> <laughs> True. Chali. Thank you. तो समझते और सीखते सीखते पांच साल लग जाएंगे. ठीक है done. Uh, any other query? Uh, just last few points. Uh, see see now what is happening. Uh, everything is faceless. Return ITR filing is a faceless. If a scrutiny assessment is there, it is a faceless. Appeal is there. Up to CIT appeal is faceless. So everything is faceless. So now earlier what we used to do, we used to explain something to the assessing officer in front of the him or her, and try to explain the points. Or जो भी evidence है वो attach कर देते हैं as a submission. और point out करते हैं ये refer करिए, वे refer करिए. Now can you orally explain everything? Answer is no. So now. we need to improve the following things first thing drafting okay how to improve the drafting a very simple formula i am giving you whenever you draft anything first of all after drafting it you need not to explain by your words the drafting should be exhaustive in a such a perfect manner that nothing you need to explain by your uh, uh, from the wordings it should be contain everything in the submission itself first thing सेकेंड थिंग आपको जब भी लगे ड्राफ्टिंग ठीक हुआ है ट्राई दिस थिंग आफ्टर ड्राफ्टिंग द सेम आफ्टर टू और थ्री डेज ट्राई टू रिफर यूर ट्राई टू रीड योर ड्राफ्टिंग आर यू एबल टू नो एवरीथिंग विच यू वुड लाइक टू एक्सप्लेन टू असिंग ऑफिसर इफ आंसर इज यस योर ड्राफ्टिंग इज एक्सॉस्टिव एंड परफेक्ट एंड आई एम श्योर आफ्टर टू डेज आपको लगेगा नहीं नहीं ये एक पॉइंट ठीक सेट कर देता हूँ ये थोड़ा चार्ट फॉर्मेट में रख दूंगा तो अच्छा रहेगा एम आई राइट to do this thing and whenever you putting any submission on the portal please put the page numbering or indexation kar dijiye aage so for example assessing officer ko lag raha hai bank statement refer karna hai to usko pata hai ye page number mein bank statement mil jayega how to put a page number on the this uh, e filing uh, e assessment portal you can do that indexation alag se submit kar dijiye baad mein jo bhi submission hai usko pdf mein convert karke numbering de dijiye और बाद में आप सबमिट कर सकते हो इट विल बी रियली इजी अगर असेसिंग ऑफिसर फाइंड इट डिफिकल्ट टू फाइंड पर्टिकुलर पेपर तो होगा क्या वो एडिशन कर देगा इट इज योर रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी टू एक्सप्लेन इट इन अ प्रॉपर वे सो दैट असेसिंग ऑफिसर अंडरस्टैंड वेरी इजी वे ठीक है ना ओके वन क्वेरी इज देयर लेट्स रिजॉर्ट द सेम शेयर प्रीमियम अंडर सेक्शन 56 टू 7 बी इज अ रैंपेडली एडिड विदाउट लुकिंग एट द जजमेंट एनी सॉल्यूशन एट असेसमेंट लेवल सी इफ यू हैव अ See first of all, if a section is clear, try to explain the section. If any judgments are available, quote the judgment clearly and tell them the judgments are binding to the assessing officer. And quote the one judgment of Supreme Court, Kamlaksi Finance Corporation, in which the same is mentioned that if a judgment of a 
uh, high court of a territory is binding to EO in that territory. You can do this thing. Otherwise, ये problem तो है. आप से 56 to 7 B की बात नहीं करो. Lots of additions are there which should not be made just because assessing officer do not understand the provision or lots of judgments are there. तो उसको बहुत complicated लग रहा है. उसको नहीं समझना है. तो addition कर देते हैं. तो वो problem तो रहेगी. Better to file the appeal. Okay, second question from Sandeep ji. Can loss from a future and option can be set off with short term capital gain in the same year in which future and option uh, loss is there? Provision is something like this. Business loss can be set off against any kind of income except salary. So in the same year, future and option loss is there. Yes, you can set off against the short term capital gain. Once the future option loss is carry forward, it is now business loss. Once business loss is carry forward, same can be set off against the business income only. So yes, in your query, answer is yes. You can set off in the same year in which future option loss is incurred. Am I clear, Sandeep ji? Okay, so I think I'm done with this session. Uh, would like to put the rest. Any query, I'm open to answer. Thank you. Members, please, uh, anybody, if having any query, put it in chat box. I will convey it to sir. Sir, I already answered all the query. But uh, anybody, if have any query, please put it in chat box. Okay, sir, I think there uh, sir, there are no queries in the chat box. Uh, are you re in receipt of any query directly to your chat box? Okay, well, there are no more queries. So let me take this opportunity to thank the branch, sir. Sir, we thank you on behalf of, of Nasik branch of WRC. Thank you very much for guiding us on a very important topic. Uh, this is this was much interactive session because uh, you have answered all the queries as and when uh, raised by the members. So. This this was the one session which is very interactive, I, I guess, because uh, all other times we are taking the queries at the end of the session, but uh, you have answered all the queries in immediate. Uh, so thank you for guiding us on a very important topic. Thank you very much. I also thank all the participants for the, joining this session. Thank you all. Now the session will be over. We are, we are ending this session. Thank you. Thank you, Dhiman. Just a request. Uh, I'm just uh, sending the uh, PPTs, the presentation to the email ID of Nasik branch. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, please send it to us and we will share with the members. Okay. And uh, thank you, Rakeshji, and all the uh, uh, participants for allowing me to speak over here. It is a, always a good experience huh, to be in the Nasik. You know, physically, to be over there is a great experience. Yes, I'm sure. We will meet physically very soon. Hopefully soon. Thank you again. Thank you to everyone. Thank you very much for inviting, accepting our invitation and delivering such a beautiful lecture. Thank you. My pleasure.